OpenAI made a new announcement for the new model, which is called GPT-40. And this is basically designed to be a real-time live chat version. So you have GPT-4, but usually if you have the audio version, there's a bit of a lag because you talk to GPT-4 and then there's going to be a pause, it's going to think, and it's going to then give you the response. But the idea of GPT-4 is that you have a real-time version. So you can use it for audio chat and video chat. So this is like in the movie Her, where you have like this AI girlfriend or whatever. So this is real-time, which is actually kind of interesting. So they just did the announcement and they basically said what it's going to be. So they're going to have quite a few things. First of all, they want to make it freely available. So it's not just for the subscribers, the whatever OpenAI Plus or ChatGPT Plus subscribers, it's going to be for everyone with some rate limitations. And it's audio, vision, and text. They're also going to have a desktop version that they're basically, that you can use on your desktop, for example, if you're doing code or stuff like that. Uh, but what's interesting is that they did a demo. So they basically did a demo where they talked to that real-time AI. And the idea is obviously to have low latency because if you have to wait for 10 seconds, it doesn't feel like a natural conversation. Even if you have a video chat, and in the video chat, there's going to be a latency of two seconds. It's weird because you're going to start falling over each other. They're going to interrupt each other. It's going to be awkward. So yeah, so this is what they're doing. So they basically had... Um, one main presentation where I believe the CTO and then uh, two other people were demonstrating how this works. So they just put it on the table and they talked to, they talked to it and they had it basically read their facial expressions or have them read the emotional tone in their voice. It's pretty detailed, pretty interesting. So here's one example where they are using it for a math equation. Because if you have video, what you can do is you can just show it what you want to show it. So for example, a math equation or coding problem, and it's going to read that image, and then it's going to give you a response, like as if you were FaceTiming someone who's much smarter than you. Time, but you can also interact with it um, with video as well. Okay, so let me boot up ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hello there, how's it going? It's going really well. Today, I'd really like your help solving a math problem. I'm all ears. What math problem can I help you tackle today? So I'm going to write down a linear equation on a sheet of paper and I'll show you. And then I'd love your help working me through it. But importantly, don't tell me the solution. Just help give me hints along the way. Got it. Oh. Okay, I see it. Hmm. Uh -huh. No, I didn't show you yet. Just give me help along the way. One second. What I actually find interesting, so clearly they're doing a math problem. I think it's a pretty simple one. But what I find interesting is you still have like a tiny bit of lag, but they have the best internet that they could have. So it's still lagging. So clearly it's still a demonstration version. And also there has to be, I guess, some friction because there has to be some calculation in the background. So it's not super, super real time. It's just very low latency. But I also noticed that there are a lot of points where there's interruption. The interruption is always awkward. I would have thought if the latency is that low, if they're interrupting each other or someone says something, that it's going to be a little more fluent. But even that is kind of a little bit awkward. And... Whoops, I got too excited. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. And they really made it like in this movie, Her, where they have a, a voice that is very emotional. So, it's a very, yeah, I mean, you recognize that as a human voice. This is definitely not a computer voice. It has an emotional tone. It's a bit scratchy, the voice. It sounds extremely real. This is pretty close to the AI girlfriend that you saw in Her. ChatGPT. What equation did I write down there? Ah, I see it now. You wrote down 3x plus 1 equals 4. Yep, Let's exactly. Work... So what's the first step I should take to try to solve this? The first step is to get all the terms with x on. OK, now they're going to solve the equation. That's not that interesting. But the idea is very simple. This is clearly this is a student example. If you're a student, this is obviously very interesting. But this is kind of cool for almost everything. If you have, let's say, you're in a restaurant and you want to split the bill. And then you show it the bill and then you say, I ate the chicken, I had the pasta and I had one Coke and calculate what, what I have to pay or calculate what everybody has to pay. This is obviously pretty cool, like just as a handy tool, which ChatGPT was already, but this is kind of cool. 
but they also show a few other examples. So I'm not going to bore you with the parts where they, I don't know, like do like weird breathing stuff, but they also do a translation example where uh, she, the CTO, is basically speaking Italian and then the other guy is speaking English and then you have the real-time translation, but more as a translator. So, for example, if you use Google Translate and you can have conversation mode, so meaning that, let's say I speak German, you speak English, then it's going to always translate both languages. But in this case, it's a little more that you have a translator that's saying, hey, she just said that. It's a little more there. It's not a direct translation. It's just saying she wants to know this. She said that or he said that. So it's kind of interesting. It's a little more of a thinking component in between, which I find fascinating just for the translation part. Doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci come risolviamo le equazioni lineari. This whole presentation is so awkward. It's like awkward from start to finish. I don't know. I mean, she, I guess, she's the technical person. She always seems kind of weird. But th this whole presentation is so weird. The problems they chose, the the things they talk about, the experiments, I don't know. It, it, seem, it seems very odd. It's very far-fetched from really good keynotes or really good presentations from NVIDIA or Apple. <laughs> Sicuramente, sì. <laughs> Certainly, yes. Great. <laughs> Looks like it works. <laughs> Okay, I mean, obviously dumb, but pretty cool if you think about the technology, because yes, you have the Google Translate. This is one thing I would really like to have. I think having just an AI assistant that is a real-time, low-latency conversation, that's an absolute game changer. That's just pretty awesome, because everybody is on the phone a lot anyway, and everybody has the earpods or the earplugs. So this makes so much sense for nearly everything. And even if it doesn't understand the full context, if you want to have an AI assistant that you can talk to, clearly the more context about you that it has is a plus. Because in the end, they're going to then know what are your current work things, your to-do list that you, that you have to take care of, what are the tasks you have to do, what are the things you think about, maybe your family or friend contacts, so it can give you a lot of advice. But even if you just have an AI, that it can use just for very specific tasks. So for example, you are currently working on a project or you're currently thinking about a certain subject and then you can just go out, take a walk and you know that this AI has all of the data on one specific project and then you can just bounce ideas off it. You could just talk to it. You can say, hey, what about this? What about that? And then you can think about it. So I can see this as a great conversation partner when it comes to business, when it comes to work, when it comes to stuff like that. I would mean, obviously, I would not recommend anybody to have an AI boyfriend or girlfriend. This just seems like a recipe for disaster. This is probably, yeah, I mean, in the movie, in the movie, in the movie, her, where you had Joaquin Phoenix, who had this AI girlfriend, and then the AI girlfriend was basically at scale. She was doing the same thing with thousands of people, which makes sense because of software. But that is a recipe for disaster because the guy in the movie was actually kind of normal. He was just a normal guy, seemed like a guy, okay, he could connect to a human, but he chose to experiment like this funny thing. Oh, let me try it out. But I don't think that's a reality. I think the people who are really going to gravitate to that are not the Joaquin Phoenix, the people who are like, uh, like it's probably the people who are extremely in introverted, extremely isolated, extremely alone, and they're going to flock to that and it's going to make everything worse. So I think from a society perspective, think about a country, I believe Japan, where you have a lot of isolation. I believe it's probably the worst country when it comes to isolation of young people. And that being enabled by technology is going to be so scary. If you have developed a bit of maturity, you can probably 
know that this is a bad direction, you intuitively feel, oh, I'm definitely not going in that direction. But if you're young, if you're 21 and you're alone and you can't connect to anyone, and then you find that and be it a boyfriend or girlfriend, like an AI version, it's just going to be really bad. So I really hope that this is not going to propagate too much when it comes to the AI boyfriend, girlfriend part. But when it comes to the conversation part, when it comes to giving it context, maybe about your life where it can act as a personal assistant when it comes to organizing your calendar. So you can connect it to your calendar and it can always tell you things, oh, you got this and that. And then maybe you have another app where you can say, okay, this is maybe the cloud storage or this is my note-taking app. And then it can get context from that. That would be interesting. But I would actually find just very simply that it connected to some database. And it can be just your Google Drive. It can be, let's say, your Evernote or something, and then you can just bounce ideas off it, and you can just talk to it for an hour, and at the end, you're going to have a very good idea of how you want to structure the project. So for brainstorming, this would be really, really cool. Okay, so other things, and then the co-founder, do I have the video here? Uh, the co-founder of OpenAI, Greg, who you might know from the ousting of uh, the last CEO, I believe he was a board member at the time as well, but it didn't uh, help. Okay, here he is, Greg. Can't make this big, yes. So what he did is actually funny. So he took two chat GPTs and he let them talk to each other. And I haven't watched that video in full yet, but uh, let's, let's watch it together. It's kind of funny because now they're talking to each other and the premise is, as you know, it has the video version as well. So it can see in addition to here. But what he did is, being cruel, he had one version be able to see and the other version can't see. And he wants one version that can't see to get visual information from the version that can see. It's basically the equivalent of a blind person having to ask the person who can see what he's seeing. So that's, that's the premise. So I haven't watched it. So let's see how the conversation turns out. Great. Hello there, new AI friend. I'm O. Ready to explore the world through your eyes? What are we looking at today? Hi, O. We're looking at a person wearing a black leather jacket and a light colored shirt. They're in a room with a modern industrial... <laughs> the way his eyebrows just came up. Oh, yeah, it's a leather jacket. ...field with exposed concrete or plaster on the ceiling and some interesting lighting. There's also a plant in the background, adding a touch of green to the space. Anything specific you'd like to know or explore? Hey there. Sounds like quite the stylish scene. I'm already intrigued by the modern industrial vibe. Let's start with the person. Can you tell me more about their style? Are they doing anything interesting like reading? At this point, I feel like he should have prepared some props. Because, yeah, I mean... He looks good. He's like doing his thing, right? It's a nice studio. I mean, much better than where I'm sitting. But, and his presentation is definitely better than the other one, I feel like, because uh, it's, it's like a little less, I don't know, less weird. But I, it would have been funny for him to prepare some props. So for example, he could have had a, like a complex Lego set or something where the AI really has to see, okay, what's, what's happening here? And then it would have to explain the colors. It would have to explain, what is it? Is it like a Star Wars ship? Or is it like a big amusement park made from Lego bricks? I think this would have been really interesting to see what the detail is. Because the other presentation literally just had this huge um, linear equation which was very easy to see. So does it depend on the camera? If you have an old Samsung phone, is it going to pick that up? So how much detail can it see and how much can it basically guess if it's a little bit pixelated? So I haven't seen that yet. So this will be interesting. I don't know why he didn't prepare a good set. Working or interacting with the space? The person has a sleek and stylish look with their black leather jacket and light colored shirt. Right now, I feel like he just wants compliments. It's literally just complimenting him. So, yeah, I got that. They seem engaged with us, looking directly at the camera. Their expression is attentive and they seem ready to interact. The setting around. He doesn't seem ready to interact. He's literally ignoring them and he's just checking his phone. I don't know. Did, did he not plan this? It feels, I mean, he has a camera guy in the background. He didn't even have any. I don't know what he's doing them with its modern and industrial design elements adds to the overall stylish feel 
they might be getting ready for a conversation or a presentation, given their direct engagement with the camera. Sounds like we're in for an intriguing interaction. I'm curious about the lighting you mentioned. Could you describe it a bit more? Is it natural light or what? What's she wearing? Well, I'm in, now, in Europe, it's summer now. I don't know where she is. Is it so cold in the US? That's crazy. She's like, she's got all the, all the warmth in that jacket. Are we talking unique fixtures or colors that add to the atmosphere? The lighting here seems to be a mix of natural and artificial. There's a noticeable bright light overhead, probably a fixture. It didn't comment on this at all. I don't know. I feel like the whole presentation sound that great. Even the other version, the other presentation, there were a lot of hiccups. There were a lot of weird parts. And this one didn't even realize that, yeah, this happened. I don't know. I think this is one of the examples where it's probably a little overpromised. I don't think it's going to be as good. I feel like this is the best version of it. And it's kind of nice, but it feels very still kind of underwhelming. Casting a focused beam downwards, which creates a spotlight effect. This adds a dramatic and modern feel to the scene. The rest of the room is lit more softly, possibly by natural light filtering. Was anything, did anything unusual happen recently? Yes, actually. Uh, just as you asked, uh, another person came into view behind the first person. They playfully made bunny ears behind the first person's head and then quickly left the frame. It added a lighthearted and unexpected moment to the scene. Yeah, okay, it's saw it, but uh, when it comes to the reasoning, it's kind of interesting. I found the other version a little more snappy. The other version was making jokes. Like, for example, you said, hey, uh, we're going to translate. You're going to be my translator. I speak English. She speaks Italian. And then the answer was perfecto, obviously Italian. So it's kind of like a little more snappy, a little more fun, a little more witty, a little faster. But this one seems, I don't know, a little slow. So I guess maybe he didn't put in that much preparation into this. But this shows that it's probably not as clean, as fast, and as, how do you say, seamless and smooth as uh, we would like it to be. It's actually very interesting. When it comes out, I'm definitely going to play with it. And now the focus is back on the original person with the leather jacket. <clears throat> Sounds like we're not the only ones enjoying a bit of fun here. That playful moment really adds a personal touch to the stylish and modern setting. Oh, God, it's kind of boring. <laughs> okay, so I was actually a little more uh, interested when, when I saw it for the uh, first time. So yeah, so this is what they got. So they also got the, the desktop version, which uh, I guess is quite useful if you use it on the desktop a lot. I don't, I think browser is pretty much fine. I'm really looking forward to that real-time version and also what you can do with it because they said that they're going to have it not only as the, let's say the app, but they're also going to have the API, meaning that you can connect other applications to it. So then obviously people are going to go crazy with that. They're going to use it and they're going to make their own personal assistant, just like you had the GPTS. Now you have the GPT-40, kind of a weird name. I don't know why, whether I added the O. But yeah, so that's kind of cool. All right, that's pretty much it.